So a spicy, spicy trial just finished up where Elon Musk was sued for billions. That's right, billions with a B, $2 billion at stake. And you know who was suing him? Tesla shareholders. They were suing him over the acquisition of a company called Solar City, a company he had 22% stake in that was founded by relatives. And yeah, you could see how that might just turn out to be a problem. Now, interestingly, that leads to sparring matches between Musk, who's on the stand, and the lawyer that's asking him questions, with Musk saying things like, you have a bad habit of using language that's not accurate, you're trying to conjure up some kind of conspiracy, it's not good. And then, well, let's just say you get into the really, really personal. Like, I think you're a bad human being. You were mentored by criminals, then continued to be mentored by criminals. That is why I do not respect you. I have great respect for the court, but not for you, sir. Yep, the trial had had it all, from statements about how Tesla, it would actually die without Musk, to the denial of financial gains because this is a stock-for-stock stock transaction, to Elon Musk boasting about him titling himself, quote-unquote, techno-king of Tesla, and saying, all of this stuff here... All it's done is generate a whole bunch of free press for us. Tesla doesn't advertise. It's helpful to general sales. Yep, those nine hours, they definitely turned out to be something. In this case, well, like I said, possibility of a $2 billion price tag on it. You and I, we're going to talk about all of this together. Buckle up, because this, yeah, what a ride. Ah, so hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. If you would, you know that drill by now, sharing videos. Is also feeding that pesky algorithm by giving it likes, comments, any type of affection. It really does love you. Also, if you're not subbed, well, consider subbing. And if you have subbed, well, make sure you're still subbed to the channel. So if you've never heard of this lawsuit at all, oh, buckle up because this is an interesting one. Why? Because Tesla shareholders, including one individual investor with large holdings in Tesla and five investment funds, they filed a lawsuit in 2000. 2017, alleging that the acquisition of the company Solar City, it was essentially a bailout and one rife with conflicts of interest. Now, as far as those claims of conflict of interest are concerned, oh, they are a doozy. Why? Because Solar City, it was founded by two of Musk's cousins. Musk himself, he was Solar City's chairperson. He has 22% stake in the company. And along with that, Tesla's board at the time, it includes a solar Solar City director, you have a former Solar City CFO, and venture capitalists who also have seats on Solar City's board. Now, this company, with all of that tie there, it's about to go belly up. So you have Tesla. They step in, they buy it for $2.6 billion, and well, you can see why shareholders they might say, hmm, what's going on with that? Now, as far as those accusations are concerned, oh, they don't stop there. You also have the plaintiff saying that Musk. He improperly pressured Tesla's board to go through with the deal. You know, he was basically asserting a lot of pressure behind the scene. He pushed the company to pay more for the sale than was really it was worth and that he deceived investors about the Solar City finances. Musk had said that Solar City, they would be cash flow positive within six months of the acquisition of the company. Tesla's solar panel division, they end up absorbing Solar City, but they're still not profitable by the first quarter of 2021. Now, as far as that technology goes, let's just say it is a resounding flop. If you really want to know why it's a resounding flop, there's a slate.com slash technology article. It's entitled Elon Musk Solar City Tesla Lawsuit Explained. It'll tell you all of that stuff, but let's just go with it fails and fails badly. Now, despite all those setbacks, though, Tesla, they maintain that there was nothing wrong with this, no impropriety whatsoever. They say that the company, you have 85% of shareholders voting in favor of this deal. Musk himself, he recuses himself from the board's discussions about it. But despite all of those statements, you have all of the directors besides Musk, they end up settling the suit. They did that last year for $60 million. They don't admit any wrong doing whatsoever, but 
Elon Musk, Tesla CEO, he refuses to settle, and well, you move forward with a trial. Now, as far as Musk's testimony is concerned, I found some of this to be fascinating. Why? Because Musk, he ends up taking the stand. He ends up, quote, attempting to refute portrayals of him as a domineering leader with overwhelming power over Tesla's decisions while also making statements that he quote-unquote tried very hard not to be the CEO of Tesla, and he said, I rather hate it and I would much prefer to spend my time on design and engineering, which is what intrinsically I like doing. Now, unfortunately, you have Musk being Musk, if you will. His ego, it seems to get in the way of his testimony, and he makes statements like this. Quote, After saying that he hated running Tesla, Mr. Musk said that the company would quote unquote die if he wasn't the chief executive. Quote, I tried very hard not to be the CEO of Tesla, but I have to, or frankly, Tesla is going to die. So, you can see how that statement there, plus that other statement, well, they don't seem to mesh really well at the end. Now, he also utilized this as part of his defense, and I thought that this was really telling, considering some of the details there. So, Musk, he said that he doesn't have any influence over the sale price of Solar City. He didn't have any control over that whatsoever. However, and he didn't have any control over the appointments to Tesla's board, even though Tesla's board, it includes his brother. But you know what? He doesn't have any control over that whatsoever. Now, additionally, you have Musk denying, just flat out denying that this would be a bailout because you can see what kind of problems that would come at if it's a bailout. And he says that this, there was no financial incentive. He didn't make any money. He said instead that this was part of an ambitious long-term plan that Tesla, they're going to be both a car and an energy company. And the reason that they haven't been, well, it was the beer bug and it was production issues on the Model 3 sedan. Those issues, they've been fixed. The beer bug, it's abating. So we're right here and this, it's going to work out. Now, one of the things that could possibly work against Musk is the fact that, well, he had some interesting exchanges with the lawyer, and apparently these go they go all the way back to the 2019 deposition that he took. Barron, that's the lawyer, started by showing clips of Musk's 2019 deposition, in which Musk repeatedly called the suit a waste of time and said Barron was a quote-unquote shameful person. Barron, discussing Musk's conduct, asked if he was derisive in a position position for any reason and said the conduct was not for some benefit of Tesla or some benefit to achieve something. I think you are a bad human being, Musk retorted. He said Barron was mentored by criminals, then continued to be mentored by criminals. That is why I do not respect you. I have great respect for the court, but not for you, sir. Now, at the end of the day, this decision, too, it could carry a two billion dollar price tag. Now, Musk, he has a net worth of $163 billion, but still $2 billion. That's a lot of money, even though the judge could utilize his discretion to lower that. Anyway, I thought this was interesting. I'm wondering what you think about it. Let me know in the comments. As always, too, appreciate the heck out of you being here. You want to help out? There are description links. You can check all of those out at your leisure, but you being here, that matters, so thank you. Appreciate you. Going to end here. Thanks.